So here we are having a, a quick look at Affinity Publisher version 2 and footnotes, side notes and end notes section. It's really just an introductory guide. I'll go into the whole thing in depth in the next video. But for now, section 1, the Affinity Publisher types. There are three types of notes in Affinity Publisher. Footnotes, side notes and end notes. Each note, regardless of its type, consists of two parts. Now this is important to remember really because it's quite easy to forget actually. A reference within your document's main text, which simply might be a point, or a document name, or an author name, and a note body that provides a citation or an explanatory comment which may be one or more lines long. A note's type determines the position of its body. Now what that means is with footnotes, side notes and end notes, which are inserted using the notes panel and accessed via Windows References Notes on the iPad via the three dot symbol right at the bottom. And I'll show you that in a minute. But obviously a footnote goes at the bottom of the text on the page you're writing. Side notes go on the side of the page, on the page that you are writing on. End notes, of course, go right at the end of the document. So keep that in mind and don't mix the two up. Footnotes, side notes and end notes are inserted using the notes panel, as I just mentioned, and accessed via the Windows Reference Notes um, tool on the desktop. On the iPad, shown here, via the three dot symbol right at the bottom of the right hand list. You'll see it there. And when you tap on that, up will come the drop down menu with notes, third from the bottom. Now there we go. On the desktop version, you select text, then notes, then insert. And I've got four X's there because that means either insert footnotes, side notes, end notes, you can convert notes, and you can show note marks. Okay, that's fairly self-explanatory, I should think. What are end notes? End notes appear at the end of your text in a piece of academic writing. They're usually indicated in the text with numbers or other symbols. They're used for citations in certain styles and to add extra information that doesn't fit smoothly into the main text. And you can see there the reference entry, which will either appear at the bottom of the page, if it's an uh, endnote. No, bottom of the page if it's a footnote. <laughs> You can see how easy it is to get confused, or the end of the document if it's an end note, and the side of the page if it's a side note. The in-text in citation may simply be in the parenthetical form, like that, or narrative form, like the second one. And you have your cursor there, and you insert your footnote or end note as required, referencing that part of your text. Now, there's many styles, but the most popular ones, I'll list them here, there's APA style. In an APA style journal article reference, the article title is in plain text and sentence case, while the journal name appears in italics in title case, and so on and so forth. You can see the format, and that's how you set out the format. Now, Depend If you're in a university or other um, advanced college, your instructors um, and the people reading your material will be quite strict on this. Make sure you get it right. So the APA reference entry, that's the footnote or endnote entry, will be like that. And the in-text citation will be like that. And I'll show you an example of these in a moment. The MLA style, which is another very popular um, style of note noting. The cited entry is like that, and the in-text citation is as shown, just Pinochet 199 
in brackets or pin shot. I'm not too sure how you pronounce that person's name. My apologies if the person by some strange chance happens to be reading this. The Chicago style, which is another popular one, but looks a little complex to start with. And it's used in two different formats. A big bibliography entry is like that. A footnote entry is like that. You can actually have both. You can have a bibliography and you can have a footnote. And the reference is the bottom one, number two. Now, endnotes or footnotes. Endnotes are sometimes confused with footnotes, and I've just done that in this um, video. Footnotes are also used to provide citations and or supplementary information, but they appear at the bottom of the relevant page instead of altogether at the end. Endnotes, hmm, clutter your writing less than footnotes, since they're all grouped together instead of spread throughout the text. They're less convenient since the reader has to flip to the back to read the notes. Uh, yes. Footnotes, however, are convenient since the reader finds the additional information on the same page. But they can make your text appear messy if there's a lot of them. You've got all these references, and I've seen uh, references there where you've got a paragraph of actual body text on the page and the rest is references. Um, very messy. You should usually choose either footnotes or endnotes and use them consistently. Don't swap them throughout your document. If, you're sta if you start out using footnotes, use footnotes all the way through. If you start out using endnotes, use endnotes all the way through. Side notes are less popular and less used and have a specific purpose. I wouldn't put those in an academic document you're handing in for um, checking. Your instructor may well tell you which style of note to use, and in fact they usually do in the writing guidelines if you're in an academic situation. Now, inserting an end note on the de desktop. Here's a, a simple step-by-step. -step. We've got a reference there to the World Something or Other Awards 2019, and I'm going to reference that, so place the cursor at the position where you want the endnote reference point. Here you see the first position in the document, and I've coloured the cursor red here so you can see it. So you put the cursor there, with the cursor at the point of insertion, go to Text, Notes, Insert EndNote. And a new page to contain the EndNotes will pop up. Now you don't get a new page for each EndNote. All the EndNotes will appear in numerical order on that page. If you need a new page, if you've got lots of references, you've got a long document, it will just keep adding pages. And it's always the end page, so you don't have to worry about that. With the number one in place, and you can then enter your endnote in the appropriate style. It won't put the endnote in for you. Where I've got the World Citation Awards, you can see there, you'll have to type that by hand and type it in the appropriate style APA, MPA, Chicago, etc. When finished, go back to your original position by simply selecting the right page. But on a big document, that's fairly impractical. So the notes panel is hidden by default, but it can be switched on by a window reference. And that way you've got the panel on the screen. From that panel, you can click on the up arrow and that will take you right back to your insertion point. If you're actually at your insertion point and you want to go back to the note, click the down arrow in the notes panel. That will take you back to the appropriate note. And you can format your end notes in the notes panel. You can see that's fairly large blue text there, which is somewhat inappropriate. The process is the same <coughs> excuse me. The process is the same in the iPad version, in that you can move back to the insertion point or forward to the note using the arrows in the notes panel. Now the following settings are available from the panel. This is uh, 
quite probably referring to the uh, iPad version with those little symbols there, but they're equally visible um, on the desktop. You can insert notes, go to the body where the notes insertion point is, or go to the reference. You can see the very top one, insert note. You'll be sitting there looking at it and thinking, "How I've typed in my note, how do I get it to, to put it there? You click on that. It's like a like a page with a, with a note reference in it. Now the other ones there are self-explanatory. It's document-wide. All notes in the selected type in the current document are affected. And custom, you can change one note, one reference. Before you do this on your finished document, I would strongly advise you to experiment or, it, or at least have multiple copies of your end document. Now the iPad version, and using this example, I can select the end note number, which is one in that case, and use the up arrow shown to move back to the document insertion point. You can see there I've got end notes, I've got one, two, three, and end note one, because I've got a couple of blank end notes in there. However, if I click on that up arrow, back it goes to number one. And you can see the number one right at the very end of the word what, as in what inspired you to submit. It's fairly straightforward and very easy to get used to. Now the notes panel, this is for the three different notes, so it's, it shouldn't be confusing. Not really. You can see on the very left one, it shows footnotes is highlight in black. The middle one is side notes, highlight in black. And the right hand one, the third one, is end notes. They've all got slightly different options there, but that allows you to insert footnotes, side notes and end notes into your documents. And each note consists of a reference at the position of insertion and a note body which is normally labelled with the same reference and whose position depends on the note type and your chosen settings. You can also customise visual attributes of references and note bodies, including the character and paragraph styles applied to them. So if you really want to get into that, you can be you can be quite you can get quite complex with that. I'd advise against it unless you really know what you're doing. Footnotes, a small example. You should note that the citation citations that I've given here are not the real ones, they're for something else. You should be able to just see the reference numbers within the text and, and they're kind of a grey colour. The first one in the first paragraph is just in front of Siegel, J1999. The second one just in front of Fromken in the second paragraph. And the third one just in front of Yule in the last paragraph. Now down the bottom, that's your footnotes. So I put one in Siegel and entered the footnote. I put two in front of Fromken and entered the footnote. I've put three in front of Yule and entered the footnote. And you can see that I'm referencing Yule in the text, but the footnote talks about Labrov. The same with Fromkin, which talks about literal. Siegel, the first one, is actually I left that the right one. So you can see it's not confused. I've done that on purpose. Now what you can see in the bottom there in the... In the um, in the footnotes, those are pre-formatted notes that were generated by uh, the program EndNotes. Now EndNotes is quite, quite, it's very expensive. Um, but there are other footnote um, and EndNote, there are other citation, pieces of citation software available. If you're doing a lot of this work, they're certainly worth obtaining. So that's the end of your short introduction. Hopefully it'll give you the impetus to explore for yourself. Building endnotes and bibliographies is a time-consuming business, but it has to be done. 
And unless you have access to a citation list generator like EndNote, as I just mentioned, if you're involved in academics particularly, you just have to do it by hand. Affinity Publisher gives you the opportunity to do just that with relative ease. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends. Talk about it. Keep those cards and letters coming. Ha, ha, ha.